This was yesterday. It was a nice sunny day, even into the evening. Looks like we're going to have a nice sunset, and we did. Nice day for a flight, I guess. But this is this morning. It's gray and it's cold. This is Fortuna Pond uh, near Yuma. It's BLM land. You can stay here 14 days, and a lot of people are. 255. And for entertainment today, we have these magic disappearing ducks. Poof. And in order to get them to reappear, you have to say the magic words. You know the magic words. Abracadabra! Wait a minute. Abracadabra! Guess I didn't say it exactly right the first time. I came out this morning and saw the gray sky, and I licked my finger and held it up into the wind, and I said... I'll bet there is a 100% chance that somebody is going to give me a weather report today. It's supposed to rain. That's the weather report I got. It's getting colder and colder so that Carolyn's dog Parker put on his coat, Dan put on his blanket, and we all started to shiver. I could fake it and use the blue in my windshield up there say oh it's lovely but the fact is it's cold and rainy you know people remember the blizzard of 52 and the great plains they're going to remember today as the day it rained in arizona in the desert it's cold so i'm thinking i'll just sit in here and talk to you about retiring in sunny mexico Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Hi, friends. Well, I think it's time for me to catch up with some of the questions I get in my comments uh, about uh, living and retiring in Mexico. So this will be another Q&A. And I've got some here that I want to address. Do you recommend sites to find affordable studios for rent? This one, by the way, comes from Michael in Hawaii. Do you recommend sites to find affordable studios for rent? I don't make recommendations because um, I'm not in the business of promoting um, anything other than just the idea that retiring and living in Mexico is not as uh, dangerous a place as a lot of the media in the United States says it is. That's my only agenda, is to um, be helpful uh, for people who are considering uh, moving to Mexico. Lynn's calling me. I was wrong. She's not calling me. It's early in the morning, and she's talking in her sleep. Uh, where were we? Oh, I don't make recommendations. I'm not a realtor, but I can tell you a couple of things. A lot of people who visit find their uh, uh, place to stay for a short period in VRBO, that's Vacation Rentals by Owner on the Internet, or Airbnb. Uh, what I recommend, if you're looking for something more than just a, a short stay to check out the area, is that you Google Points South. That's a little magazine that's all over town all the time, and it has pictures and prices of things for sale. But more importantly, I think, for doing research is that it has the names and phone numbers of every realtor in the area. And most of the realty companies that uh, deal in selling properties also have a rental division. That's how you do research. Again, the name of that is Point South. Uh, and if you're looking in uh, the Lake Chapala area, I think it's called Points South Chapala Edition, if you want to Google that. But they have um, not online not only each 
uh, current issue, but past issues. So if you want to do some research into prices of property or find realtors that might have rental opportunities, uh, that's a good place to look. Points South, Chapala Edition. Do you recommend any handyman with wood cabinet knowledge? Ideally, I would like to hire a person to help me with my entire project. I do. Uh, I'm currently in my motorhome in, in Arizona. And um, I have a nephew of my gardener who built some um, bathroom cabinets and did a great job for me. His name is Carlos, but I don't have his contact information with me here in the motorhome in Arizona. I'll be back in my home in Mexico in March, at which time I would be happy to recommend nephew Carlos as a cabinet maker. I heard it's tricky to buy used vehicles in Mexico. What's the best way to navigate the ins and outs of dealing with used car salesmen and having the paperwork in order? Well, I think that uh, dealing with used car salesmen probably is the same just about any country in the world. Uh, caveat emptor is the Latin expression, so apparently buyer beware has been going on for about five or six hundred years because Latin hasn't been spoken for that long. Um, I think that there are people who will help you do a couple of things. Uh, there is a local business in uh, near Ahihik, it's in Roberas de Pilar. Um, it's called s, &S Auto. If you want to look that up, you can probably get their contact information and ask them some questions, and they will give you real educated answers, which you're not going to get from me because the last time I bought a vehicle in Mexico was 14 years ago. Anyway, uh, and, and things change. S&S Auto, I'm sure, will have answers to those questions if you want to Google them and get some contact information and email them or... Um, call them. And again, <laughs> I'm not associated with that business. It's just a local business that I'm aware of. There are people who will go with you to the big auctions in um, Guadalajara, and every weekend they have a big uh, uh, like auto swap meet where lots and lots of used vehicles are sold not only by uh, dealers but also by private individuals. And there are people who will go along with you to that um, weekend car swap meet, if you want to call it that, up in Guadalajara and help you, um, either with uh, mechanical knowledge or making sure the paperwork is right. Uh, the question was uh, premised on the idea that it's tricky to buy a used vehicle in Mexico. I've bought a used me vehicle in Mexico, and I've also imported my van, um, or nationalized it, it's called. And there didn't seem to be anything tricky about it. Certainly there are some hoops that you have to jump through, and you have to have the paperwork right and stuff, but I don't think, I wouldn't call it tricky. Of course there might be some dishonesty, and I'm sure you could buy a vehicle that uh, the title wasn't proper, and all of those kinds of things, but... Like I said, call a local car company and ask somebody who actually knows about that. I have some dental work to be done. Do you have any one you recommend in particular? As a matter of fact, I do. Uh, if you've looked at my video about dental work and you see my bottom four teeth here and my top two teeth here, I have a dentist that I am very confident in. He's extremely modern and very affordably priced for all of the kinds of dental work that you would need done. Lynn had some very extensive gum cleaning. This isn't just a cleaning, it's uh, cut the gums and lift them and clean underneath and sew them back together. Um, pretty, pretty invasive <laughs> cleaning. At a 
very, very reasonable price recently, and I do recommend the dentist, but I don't do it on my YouTube channel. You would need to send me an email, and then I will give it to you. And I have a reason for that. My reason is that I don't want to start a public conversation about whose dentist in Ahihik is best because there are a lot of dentists, some of them good, most of them good, some of them whose ex-patients have other opinions, and I just don't want to be involved in that conversation. This is uh, a comment from Susan. Susan says, thanks for your informative videos. I'm maybe 15 years from retirement, but starting to think about it. That's a good plan, Susan. I have daily life questions. Do you have to filter all your water still, or are you used to it by now? Well, there is uh, a thing about getting used to the local um, fauna and flora in water. When Mexicans go to the United States, they're subject to getting diarrhea, just like when people from north of the border travel to Mexico, they get Montezuma's revenge. <laughs> and a lot of that's from drinking too much tequila, but that's a different subject. We all have um, bacteria in our gut, and it's different bacteria in different parts of the world. So if you go to a different part of the world, um, the Local people may be used to the bacteria that's available to eat, and the new people aren't, so you get diarrhea. That's how that works. Um, I'm not a doctor, but I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express once, so that's as much as I know about it. Uh, we don't drink the water. And it's not because of that, and it's not because after 18 years of living in Mexico, we've gotten used to uh, the local fauna and flora in your gut. The reason is because the water that we get out of our uh, taps is not good to drink. And it's not good to drink because the water that comes out of the local wells in Ahihik is quite good and potable. But Unlike the pressurized system in the United States, the city doesn't pump 24-7. So it's not a pressurized system all the time. They pump several hours a day. And um, when they're not pumping, um, the people at the top of the hill run out of water. Usually, I'm down on the lake, I don't run out of water pressure hardly ever because I'm at the bottom of the gravity flow system. But when the people at the bottom of the hill are using water and the people at the top of the hill aren't, the old water system, which has some leaks, the leaks aren't spraying water from the pressure. They're sucking whatever's outside the pipe into the system. That's why we don't drink the water. And Mexicans don't drink the water either. Um... Water is delivered all over town every day in big five-gallon or 19-liter bottles, and it costs about 20 pesos, which is a dollar. So we're paying about 20 U.S. cents per gallon for drinking water. And we use it to cook, and we use it to um, wash vegetables. So, no, we're not drinking the water because we've gotten used to it. I don't care about meat because I'm a vegetarian. How is the price of fruit, vegetables, beans, and nuts, seeds, rice, and bread, etc.? Well, food is not um, less expensive than Walmart in the United States. That kind of food, you know, fresh vegetables and things. Um... It's about the same. That's all I can tell you. How do you prepare fruits and vegetables? Uh, we wash our vegetables, and some people use, I think the brand name is Microdyne. It's uh, 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 
purification chemical that you put in your water to wash your vegetables to purify them or to kill the bacteria. We don't use that. We use a, a, a spray bottle with some water and some bleach. Lynn mixes it up, and I don't have a formula for you, but just it's not pure bleach, but it still smells like bleach. That's about how I can describe it. And we take a pan full of bottled water and we spray, you know, six to ten squirts into the pan and we wash our vegetables in that. And then we dump it out and put them in a drying rack and then we rinse them again with bottled water. That's what we do and we've been doing it for years and years and years and haven't had any problems. Can you eat them raw or will you get sick? After you wash them, you can eat them raw. And that's not about Mexico. Uh, a lot of the vegetables that you get in the United States are from Mexico. Um, and the fruit that we get, I go to Walmart in Ajijic and the pears are from Yakima, Washington. So this isn't about where you are, it's about how they grow fruit and vegetables all over the world. Wash your vegetables. Uh, do you bring, did you bring your car with you? I have three vehicles in Mexico. I have a Dodge van, which I brought with me from the United States, and many years ago I nationalized it, which means I imported it and made it a Mexican vehicle and got Mexican license plates for it. And I had to pay a duty on the valuation of the van. And at the time, that was uh, about $600. And it was an old van then. It's, it, 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 so I think the valuation for it at the time was about $4,000. So whatever percentage that is, I had to pay a duty on it. And then there was other associated paperwork with the registration and the license plate and all of that stuff. So it cost a few hundred dollars to do that. There are services of people who will do that for you, but it's not necessary when you first come to Mexico. Uh, if you come in on a tourist visa, your car enjoys the same privileges to be in the country as its owner. If you're a temporary resident, same thing applies. You can have your foreign-plated vehicle in the country as long as you are in the country. Uh, once you become a permanent resident and your immigration status becomes permanente, then you are precluded from having a foreign-plated car in the country. Uh, that's why my Suzuki had to leave the country a few years ago, because I became a permanent legal resident, and so... Um, I had to take it out of the country because it was too old to import and it has to be, in most cases, a NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, manufactured car, Canada, U.S. or Mexico. My other two vehicles, um, I have a BMW Roadster and I bought that in Mexico. Uh, it was originally a U.S. plated car and uh, a previous owner imported it. So I didn't have to deal with that. It was already Mexican plated. The uh, other vehicle I have is a Honda uh, ATV, a Honda Foreman, four-wheel drive uh, ATV. And I bought that from a dealer in Guadalajara and it was kind of like in the middle of the process between being imported and being nationalized. or Anyway, I had to do half of the process. It was half done already, but I still had to do it. So this is not a complicated thing. It's not a problem. I, I don't know why somebody would say that it's uh, tricky to buy or import a car into Mexico. Uh, how do you register it? Kind of the same way you register it anywhere else. You go to the equivalent of the DMV and um, do the paperwork. I'm from California. Oh, this isn't uh, Michael. This is Susan, yeah. 
I'm from California, and the weather is nice most of the time, and it uses little gas. Oh, I ride a motorcycle, and it uses little gas. Do people use motorcycles where you live? Yep, lots of motorcycles, lots of mopeds and scooters and four-wheel ATVs, and there are a lot of those. The one thing that I would say about that is that I do not recommend a little scooter that has small tires because we have cobblestone streets and that's they catch in the rocks. So I would get something with bigger spoked motorcycle type tires rather than scooters. Well, that's enough for today. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.